Hi everyone, good day, good afternoon. I'm so happy to be with you again. And today I have a very special guest. It's uh, Benoit Koenig. Uh, he is co-founder of Vision. And why it's so special? Because everyone seems to be talking about this new breakthrough technology, which can help with uh, shrink on the floor. So welcome Benoit. I'm very happy that you found time uh, for this uh, talk. So first question, please introduce yourself and introduce Vision. Yeah, thank you so much, Evgenia, to, to have me here. Uh, my name is Benoit, and I co-founded Vision in 2018. Uh, we spent around two years on R&D, uh, and we've been selling our solution for a bit more than one year. Uh, we basically developed a gesture recognition technology that you plug onto existing cameras to detect automatically in real time shoplifting. Very well. So can you talk a little bit more about how does it work? What is the technology behind it and why does it work? Exactly. Um, so basically, uh, we are working with uh, a new technology that is uh, expanding in, in, the, in the last few, uh, few months called deep learning that you apply to video analytics. So basically, our technology relies on several AI bricks that are working together. You have one brick which is performing human detection, another brick which is performing body parts localization on each detected human, another brick which is performing object recognition to recognize the shelf, an item, uh, a backpack, a purse versus a shopping cart or shopping bag. And all those bricks together, they provide you with the probability of the occurrence of a certain gesture either associated with shoplifting or with a normal shopping behavior. And when the probability goes beyond a certain threshold on a, on a suspicious gesture, then we're able to alert, to send an alert to the, to the store owner so that it can intervene in real time. So when you say gestures, you probably have some list of gestures you can support. Is that just how it works? Yes, and it is actually an evolving list. Uh, we started with uh, five different gestures and now we are adding uh, a few gestures according to what the clients are asking for. Uh, but basically we detect uh, gestures such as putting an item in a, in, a, in a pants, in a jacket, in a backpack, in a purse, in a baby stroll, uh, the gesture of uh, removing uh, the package from a product or removing the antiseptic system, especially on alcohol bottles. So these gestures which you already have on the list, uh, what are type of retail is uh, the best? Like is it groceries or maybe is it a drugstore? So what would be the best uh, options to choose for this technology? Well, as long as you observe the, the, those gestures in, in any type of shop, while well, you can equip any type of shop. Uh, we started uh, with food retail and pharmacies. Uh, mm -hmm. We have equipped so far uh, more than 700 stores across the, across the world. Uh, and we're starting to uh, equip new type of stores such as electronics, DIY, cosmetics, clothing. And we observe that it works the same. People are shoplifting the same in every type of store. And then you're just adjusting as per your customer requirement, like adding new gestures, like you said, in the list, right? Exactly, exactly. You, you, you don't have to start from scratch to add a new gesture. Uh, you're reusing most of the, the AI that have been built already, and you're just going to feed your algorithm with some video data to, to teach him how to, do, to detect a new type of gesture. So what are the limitations of such a technology? Obviously, it's deep learning, so we always have uh, some possibilities and some limitations. What are the limitations of this one? Well, the, the limitations uh, might come from the, 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 the use of, of this new te technology. People are, are used to just watch at the, 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 the camera feed, you know, the live, uh, and they have to, 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 to get used to, to that new uh, type of being alerted. Uh, so basically, our, our clients are using an app where they can uh, add their security agents, their employees, and, and those people need to be aware uh, that all those alerts are just a help, uh, a new information that comes to them in real time. It's never an order to arrest someone. So you, you need to train the, the, the user to tell him, hey, if you, need to, uh, if you have a doubt, you need to maybe see what happened before or after to make sure this is a, a, a real shoplifting. It happened, but it's very marginal uh, that you can get an alert when people put their own mobile phone or wallet 
in their jacket or, or, in, or, or in their personal bag. It, it happens very rarely, but when it happens, you need to, to be trained to, to, to get the information and be sure it's suspicious or not. Uh, of course, people need to wait uh, for the customer to come at the checkout to make sure it's a shoplifting or not. Um, and, and another limitation, which we're working on because this is an evolutive technology, uh, the more data you have, the, the better the algorithm is becoming. So, of course, today you cannot detect 100% of shoplifting happening on the shopping floor, but nobody can guarantee you 100%. But over time, we will reach to 95, maybe 99% of detection. That's very interesting. And also, I think uh, all of the listeners are thinking, what is the rate of the false alarms? Uh, how often do you actually have uh, an alarm where nothing really happened? Yeah, so basically, uh, we, you can see the buttons below each video alert that can be clicked uh, by the user. So we get feedback from the store uh, and we know how relevant the alert that we send are. Uh, so basically, uh, we measure a relevance rate rather than a false positive rate. Um, and uh, that relevance rate uh, reaches 85% today. So 85% of the alerts that we send to the store are considered as relevant. For example, a customer puts an item in a backpack, the store owner wanted to receive the alert, but then it might not be a theft. The guy might just pay the, the, the item at the checkout. That's very interesting. And uh, can you give me an idea of uh, how many alerts per store do you normally receive? Or how? I think the, the, the right question would be, uh, how many uh, alarms can be sent to one person so he can actually work with uh, with that without a loss of the well it's not too many yeah well a good question um, this varies a lot from store to store because we can activate or deactivate certain gestures per camera so you have some store owners who, who ask us okay on the beverage section i want to receive all types of gestures on other and less sensitive sections, I want to receive only obvious concealment gestures. And so we can calibrate the number of alerts sent per day um, according to, to what the client needs. So for most of, of our stores, um, we are, we're going to send between 15 and, and 30, 40 alerts per day. Uh, an alert is five seconds of, of attention, right? So it's not too much, it's acceptable, especially on, on, on a long day where stores are open from 12 to 14 hours a day. And of course, when you have a security agent, uh, this is the country, the security agent will ask us to send uh, as many alerts as we can so that uh, he can intervene a, a lot more than before. So yeah, that sounds very realistic, 40 alerts per day, doable. For, for me, it does not even distracting from the normal work, uh, it doesn't sound too bad. So you mentioned that uh, you already employed this technology in around 700 stores all over the world. My next question uh, would be, do you already see uh, return on investment? Uh, how is it uh, um, How is it saving money uh, at this point of time? Can you already share some data? Exactly. So basically our customers are following two uh, KPIs. Uh, the first one is the number of thefts that were detected thanks to Vision. Uh, and second is the amount of money it represents, because when they arrest someone on our app, uh, the user can actually put the, the, the amount in money. And so we can we can provide the customer with a, a monthly report to to make uh, to make him assess how many thefts he arrested last month for how much money saved. Um, and we had a, a few studies uh, made by our clients uh, after having used the solution for 12 months uh, and for nat uh, an organic food chain in France, which count 200 stores, they measured a decrease of the inventory shrinkage by half. Then all is not due only to shop to client shoplifting and so to, to, to vision, uh, but you can clearly see a big difference uh, at the end of the year on your, on your, uh, on your balance sheet. Very well, it sounds very interesting. So uh, tell us more about uh, the roadmap. What are you expecting to develop uh, during next years? 
Yes, yeah, so we want to focus on shoplifting. There's a lot to do um, on that subject only. Uh, so our aim is to equip uh, more stores uh, and in every geography because shoplifting works the same. That's what we observe in our stores running in Australia, in the US, in the UK, in other countries in Europe. Um, we want to expand in other uh, verticals. Uh, once again, we started with uh, retail, so food retail, pharmacies, cosmetics, DIY, electronics. Uh, but we would like to also try to equip uh, logistics because there are some shoplifting problems in, in warehouses. Um, and um, then after having tackled the, the problem of shoplifting, we would like to uh, expand to other uh, shoplifting, uh, uh, other AI solutions. Um, so not only shoplifting, but we can imagine detect, uh, detecting other um, situations thanks to AI applied to video. So maybe uh, fight in public areas, um, even violent contents on social networks, because this is all about human behavior. Very interesting. So we're all looking forward to see this uh, new horizons. Well, thank you very much for joining me today and explaining us uh, this wonderful technology. Uh, if uh, some of our listeners want to know more, where should they go? Yeah, well, they can uh, go visit our website vision.io. Uh, and of course, they can send me an email to benoit.koenig, K-O-E-N-I-G, at vision with two E's, dot I-O. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, all of you have a great day. And thank you, Benoit, once again for joining me today. Thank you so much, Evgenia. Talk soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.